psychological safety is something introduced mm -hmm. by Amy Edmondson, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a really interesting concept. We actually do a lot of measurement mm -hmm. uh, on that uh, idea, and we ask a question, for example, um, do you as an employee feel free to speak your mind without fear of negative consequences? Mm -hmm. And we find something around, you know, 40% of people, in, in, even in the companies that we work with, and many of those are, um, you know, large yeah. global businesses, but 40% of people will say no, they're not sure, they can mm. really say how, what they think and how they feel. Um, and we see that even more so with women uh, yeah. than men. I think from my perspective, the issue that you have with psychological safety is we try and answer it from a corporate perspective. Yeah. So you're asking, when you're saying that we're collecting this type of data and asking these questions, we're asking it from a corporate perspective. Yet psychological safety is something that uh, is experienced in everyday, everyday life. So. From a female perspective, if I'm going to be, if I'll answer it from my frame of reference as yeah. a female, yeah. uh, do I feel comfortable speaking up and raising issues as and when they get raised, if I've seen unethical behavior, if I feel like I've had unfair treatment? Whether I do that in that current organization is not dependent on that current organization's culture. It'll be dependent on my past experiences, yeah. which could be at university. It could have been in my schooling environment. It could have been in my home environment. And you, you bring that concept of psychological safety that your experiences with it all the way through the organization. So there's a personality factor and an experience factor. I was thinking about this yesterday at this conference when I'm asking the question around why are people not asking questions? Yeah. Right. And we, the typical response here in Asia is it's culturally attuned. People will prefer to respond via question or polling system rather than actually mm -hmm. stand up and ask questions. But why is that? Is it because people are worried about sounding stupid in front of their peers? So I don't know if I'm credible enough to ask a question and I'm very concerned about whether I have the right to ask this question. So much HR and people practice in organizations are based on strongly held beliefs yep. uh, or something the chief executive said one time, yep. you know, like uh, uh, individual experiences and intuition. Yep. There is 50 to 100 years of science and data that you know evidence basically uh, about the nature of human nature particularly in large groups like in an organization that we can learn from and there's also these days a rich vein of other data around you know people's experiences or the other things that you mentioned comp mm -hmm. um, that we can leverage far more effectively the concept of uh, so you know it's not that it's unimportant for psychological safety but what we're saying is is that um, your, your, the ability to speak up and to say what you really think and feel is a bit more than trust. It's, it's I won't be evaluated mm -hmm. on this, right? And that's very challenging because, again, your reputation is defined by the sum of your interactions with others. You know, there is an accounting process in people's yeah. minds and, yeah. well, uh, and how they evaluate people and every interaction is an opportunity to update that accounting process. And part of the challenge is yeah. for many you know, how do we manage that effectively? How do we create a culture whereby, you know, that accounting process doesn't happen in quite in the same way? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're almost trying to change the nature of human nature by doing that, and that makes it tremendously difficult to achieve. And mm -hmm.